If you wanna check out what my top five sunscreens are for this season, my current favorites and everything sunscreen info that I've gathered and want to share with you, then please keep on watching. Hello my friends, if this is your first time here, thank you so much for clicking. My name is Alicia and Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves everything movement and beauty. If you wanna check out my movement adventures, all that can be found on my Instagram. I'm also looking to add more flexibility and body weight training tutorials here on my channel. Hopefully I could get that together before the summer's end and going forward. I'm in a sports bra, I'm ready to go. Let's talk sunscreens today. In my most recent skincare phase video, I raved about sunscreen and all the skincare channels that I've been watching. I have been gathering a lot of information about sunscreen, uh, the importance of them, the ingredients, and generally there's a lot of misinformation out there misinformation that I myself had believed at one point and shared as well so I wanted to take this opportunity to just share what I've learned and just share with you my favorites timestamps will be down below if you care to just skip over to the favorites portion I'll have each timestamp listed next to each sunscreen so if you only care about one you could just see that portion of the view and go I'll see you later. I wanted to take the time to share a couple of things about sunscreens. Generally in the beauty industry, sunscreens are divided into two major categories, chemical and physical. The more accurate label for each of those categories is organic and inorganic. The reason I say that is because typically the physical sunscreens or also labeled as mineral sunscreens are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Those ingredients are also chemicals as well as everything else in the formula. But for those who have sensitive skin, they found that organic or chemical filters as they refer to sting their eyes make them break out so on and so forth so i totally get that the inorganic zinc and titanium are just better for your skin unfortunately those with somewhat brown skin tan skin anywhere on the brown skin tone spectrum Zinc oxide will leave you with a white cast, unfortunately. Uh, no matter how clear it's said to be or tinted it's said to be, it just has that unsightly gray undertone that just looks god awful. And if you're not one to wear foundation makeup for any matter, then it's hard to cover up and shield that. Some people embrace the blue skin look and that's fine, but I'm not one of those people, so. <laughs> Chemical sunscreens or the more accurate term, organic sunscreens are the filters that you see oxybenzone, avobenzone, octanoxate, homosalate, homosalate or homosalate. People are scared of those filters because they're chemical and they absorb the filters and heat up. Unfortunately, zinc and titanium dioxide, and is that an unfortunate thing actually? I'll get to that in a minute. Those filters also absorb UVA and UVB rays they just absorb 95 percent instead of the whole hundred percent like the organic filters do they reflect maybe five percent of the rays and that's a misconception concerning the physical filters is that they reflect all the rays and that's why people think they're safer because they don't absorb them they, they absorb them the same way that avobenzone and all the o's do and there are some organic filters like the newer ones tinosorb snm that take on both inorganic and organic capabilities in terms of reflecting and absorbing. So there's a fine line in terms of dissecting those filters into strict categories. Like some of them go both ways. <laughs> And I'll touch briefly on the coral reef bleaching. A lot of people feel that there are chemical sunscreens that bleach coral reef. Uh, there have been studies, and I could list those down below, that zinc oxide is also said to bleach the coral reefs. Now keep in mind that a smaller body of water has a different effect than a larger body of water. And for those who are in smaller body of waters with a whole lot of people, that's probably where you would wear uh, sun protective clothing instead of the filters that are said to cause chemical bleaching. Trying to find the picture. This information is from Lab Buff and Beauty Science, who I love. Michelle Wong breaks it down like no other. I highly recommend you check out her videos about sunscreen because she will tell you the truth. The filters that are said to be harmful in coral bleaching are oxybenzone, octanoxate, enzacamine, enzac as it came in. She had problems saying that word too. And zinc oxide. Minimal harm or no effect, octocrylene, octosalate, avobenzone, octotriazone, mixoral SX, uh, mixoral 
XL and titanium dioxide. The filters that we do not know yet contribute to coral bleaching are the newer UVA filters, and those are Tinosorb S, Tinosorb M, Uvinol A+, n lizole and homosalate. All these terms are tongue twisters. A lot of the sunscreens that I have contain the newer UVA filters. Hopefully when that data comes out that it is confirmed that these do not harm the coral reefs. But keep in mind that sunscreen is not the one reason coral reefs are being bleached. It also has to do with the temperature in the sea rising constantly every year, uh, agricultural management. So there are a lot of factors contributing to the coral reef topic. I think many care about the sunscreen thing because it's something simple to rectify and to fix, right? Telling farmers to not use certain substances and, and what have you is like a whole other ordeal. And Hawaii banning a lot of their filters. There are some marine biologists who don't like the ban because they feel that it just plays such a small role in the overall degradation of our coral reef systems. It's taking away from that bigger picture and it also might discourage people from wearing sunscreen altogether which is dangerous melanoma is serious and people don't realize that incidental sun exposure or getting a tan or i don't want to put sunscreen on because i want to save the coral reef well, unfortunately, if you don't, that coral reef might survive and you won't. And just a quick note about endocrine hormone disrupting talk. The chemical filter that was found to have the most hormone disrupting findings is oxybenzone. If you just wanna stay away from it, stay away from it. But there are some chemical filters that are easily absorbed and some that aren't. Keep in mind, just because something is found in urine or breast milk, doesn't necessarily mean that it will present a threat. And keep in mind that technology today can detect very small amounts, like tiny amounts of different ingredients in substances. So, so it just so happens that when they were testing these substances, they found oxybenzone in urine and in breast milk. I understand this sounds scary, but again, toxicity is indicated by concentration, not just by presence alone. Animal tests and in vitro tests are very different and they translate differently to human skin. And again, Lat Muffin Beauty explains this very thoroughly on her blog and she does have those publication links if you want to take a read. You will have to apply sunscreen every day for 277 years for oxybenzo to have our hormonal effect. That's a long time and that's a lot of sunscreen. You will have to apply sunscreen to 75% of your body surface area. I'm sure maybe you're not doing every day. I know I'm not. I primarily focus on my face and the major parts of my body that will be exposed to the sun. The evidence does not support that chemical filters disrupt your hormones. If you feel that they do, if you don't believe the findings, if you don't believe the evidence, then just don't use oxybenzone. There are a lot of sunscreens out there that don't. Stick with the newer filters because again, not only are they photostable, but they are better at blocking the different levels of UVA that could be responsible for hyperpigmentation, which is one of my concerns. Just wanted to put that in here. Let's get back to the video. Bye! And doing your research is tough. And I'm trying to refrain from saying that because I also heard this on the Beauty Brains, another podcast that I absolutely love. Doing research, like actual research, is difficult. In this digital age where there is so much information, so much wrong information, you could be reading the wrong thing and you don't even know it despite the studies being available, a lot of medical papers being published online. Typically, if you are from a medical or scientific background, you're able to interpret those studies uh, accurately. If you're not and someone reads that when scientists injected oxybenzone into rats and they found oxybenzone in their urine. Oh my God, misinformation spreads. And then you'll read a lot of misinformed blog posts about these substances, about a lot of substances and just scare everyone who reads your article. Researching is hard. I mean, to read like a 50 page 
publication about one substance is not fun. It is hard reading. And I don't think people realize that that's what actual research is and not just reading some random Allure blog post. So you kind of have to choose what route you want to go with that. But I try to leave it to the experts. Those who are actual uh, cosmetic chemists, who have an actual background in science, who are actually toxicologists and not just consultants and beauty consultants and not to take anything away from those people. I want to hear from the people who are in the field. I'm open to hearing opinions about what they find in those studies, but... I'm sticking to the scientists, okay? Now with that spiel out of the way, you're like, I should have skipped over. Let's get into my top five sunscreens. The first one I want to present is one that has always held a special place in my heart because this was the one sunscreen I encountered that just made applying sunscreen a pleasure. It is the Neogen Dermalogy Daylight Sunscreen Protection SPF 50 PA plus 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 this i believe retails around 20 dollars i think you could get it for 16 on amazon uh, if you don't trust amazon beauty products i understand but i will put both links down below uh, sephora has this back in stock so i'll put the sephora link down below as well as the amazon one this relies on wait i got my notes i got my notes this sunscreen relies on octanoxate which is one of the reef killers so if that's a problem if you're only applying this to your face and not to your whole body it should be okay in a very big 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 body of water not a small one tinosorb s as well as zinc oxide and titanium dioxide so this relies on both organic and inorganic filters to provide that uv protection pros are it can dry down clear now the amount of sunscreen you should be applying to your face and neck is half a teaspoon it's a lot and I will call myself out when I had reviewed this and presented it as a favorite last year. I wasn't putting on enough. That's why it applied clear because there wasn't enough to actually leave a cast. But I found that even when applying a ton of this, when you start to rub it in, it can look dicey. But it does dry down somewhat clear. And if you like to layer your sunscreens, maybe you put this on as a second layer and maybe not as much of it. But I really love the texture and one of the standout characteristics about this formula was the scent. That it didn't smell like a typical sunscreen like Banana Boat, for instance, which I have, but no, nothing against Banana Boat, but some people are really sensitive to that type of a smell. It almost has a citrus scent to it, which unfortunately, if you are sensitive to flower oils, I mean, this does have lavender oil in it, and some of them are at the bottom of the list, but I would proceed with caution if you are sensitive to fragrance or any type, again, of essential oils. I have been fine with it so far, but I really can't predict on my own skin when it will decide to react to those ingredients. I will keep using it, however, because if I don't use it on my face, I'm definitely using it on my neck and my chest for sure. I would say this dries down to like a satin finish, and Soko Glam does market this to be more suitable for drier sensitive skin types but if you are on the drier side of the skin spectrum this texture you will love up next we have a newer brand to me the purito centella green level safe sun this is an spf 50 pa plus 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 one more plus than the neogen dermalogy this retails for i believe around 15 dollars. i got this off yes style this is also sold on amazon now this brand aligns themselves with the ewg I, I make that face because the EWG presents all these toxic substances, but they don't have a toxicologist to actually confirm those claims. Anyway, if you love the EWG, then this is EWG approved. So yay, yay, yay. This has Uvenol A, Uvenol T. This uses the newer UVA filters. And I'm sorry to mention this before, but the newer UVA filters like Tinosorp s and Mixoral and the Uvenols are more photostable and they play better with other filters. For instance, our approved UVA filters here in the States are zinc oxide, 
avobenzone, and it is, is it titanium? I'm not too sure. We don't have the fun new filters here in the States because the FDA has not yet approved and updated that list. Uh, it's a problem because if you were to combine avobenzone with zinc oxide, the avobenzone will degrade a lot faster than it would on its own. That's why it is always recommended that you reapply these sunscreens every two hours because when the avobenzone and the zinc absorb these filters, they lose their capability to protect you further. So that's why you gotta put on new sunscreen. That's the big hoopla with the newer UVA filters and that's why people are buying a lot more Asian sunscreens as well as if you could get them anywhere from Europe. Even the La Roche-Posay formulations have the newer UVA filters, but not here. <laughs> So I'm sorry. Unfortunately though, this does contain flower oils, which is just beyond me to present something as safe. It says mild ingredients to help reduce skin stresses and protects against UVAs and harmful environments without stickiness nor white white residue on the skin. This is true. I find this is a touch more clear than the Neogen and it does have like a an herbal scent to it. So it does have fragrance unfortunately. Uh something that presents itself as safe sun with floral oils, I would still proceed with caution if you are sensitive to fragrance. If this was fragrance free, I would deem this a lot more paper not from toxic chemicals but just from you getting a, a skin allergy or skin reaction to any of the oils in here the floral oils in here i still do love it though i love how it dries down i do like how it smells it hasn't bothered me yet it doesn't dry down sticky it actually dries down to a really beautiful like soft matte glow i like it a lot and i've been using that quite a bit so that has easily made itself a favorite this season the next one which i recently purchased and i've just heard great things about is the elta md skincare tinted uva clear broad spectrum and spf 46. this is tinted and this is what i would put on as my second layer now even though it is tinted i still do believe it kind of leaves a little bit of a gray cast because this primarily relies on zinc oxide it has nine percent and octanoxate 7.5 percent this dispenses a perfect quarter size amount which is the appropriate amount you should be applying at once on your skin so again if you press down all the way you will get the full amount and it is a lot of sunscreen and that is the reality of it you got to slap on a lot of sunscreen on your face if you don't like the feeling of it get over it and find a formula that feels good on your skin because to protect you from the sun it is a priority. Now, I, I'm always changing the exposure because the light's always changing, so just bear with me. This is what happens when we're at Mandy's house. This is definitely one of the more expensive sunscreens I have in my collection. I believe this is like around the $37 area. I've been enjoying this, and if you wanna see, cause I need to reapply some sunscreen anyway. I, I know you already saw the demo. I'm only applying this amount because Primarily, when I apply my first layer, that's when I apply like maybe half half of a teaspoon because since I combine the filters, the second layer then makes it a whole half a teaspoon. It's so important to get it under your eyes as well as on the lid, and then I concentrated on my actual hyperpigmentation. So you see it does leave a little bit of a white cast. You can see that obvious line of demarcation which I'm trying to just blend into my hairline. I wear makeup so I don't mind, but if I was not going to apply makeup, then I would apply two layers of my most favorite sunscreen of the season. You know, you know who it was gonna be. This is the Beat Shield from Crave Beauty. Now, I go in extensively about this product in my skincare fave video, so if you wanna head over there, I'll check out the details on that. This sunscreen relies on Uvenol A+, as well as Tinosorb S and Uvenol T. Again, more photostable, more compatible with other UV filters. It won't break down on your face as fast as the Benzone. It's just phenomenal. And the way this goes on, this, I feel, has been the most clear dry down out of all the sunscreens that I have used. It does have alcohol in it, and don't fear alcohol. I've been one to demonize alcohol here in my 
channel i take it back i was wrong to say that alcohol is necessary to stabilize the uv filters and just ensure their performance optimal performance it does not make me dry there's not enough in there to wreak havoc but if you do have rosacea, then it might make you feel extra sensitive. So just proceed with caution if you have that skin condition. But the alcohol is fine. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be scared of it unless you have a history with alcohol and you do have to stay away with it. When you first apply the beet shield, you might get a little scared because it's shiny. But once it dries down, it dries down like soft matte. It's exceptional in terms of formulation i still can't figure it out it doesn't have a fragrance it does kind of smell like sunscreen but it disappears in a matter of minutes i love reapplying it throughout the day i love the bottle i ordered two because they just restocked i believe on monday and yeah i got my backup amazing formula i think leah did a phenomenal job and it's one of the better sunscreens we have here in the states to order in addition to the asian sunscreens this i feel is great because it doesn't have any essential oils in it so i believe ex with the exception of the alcohol if you are scared of alcohol i think this will be great for a variety of skin tones and the reason it doesn't have the spf on here is because since it has the near uva filters it will be illegal for it to be sold with the label spf 50 so that's why she had to call it a shield an antioxidant shield but I love my antioxidant shield. Another tip when applying sunscreen to your face, to not over rub. The reason why is because if you over rub, you could dismantle the film that it's supposed to form on your face. That's why I've been applying my makeup with a sponge because when you stipple it on, stipple, you're more likely to not disrupt that film that formed. I don't even like fingers because sometimes if you do that with your fingers and if you apply too much pressure, you could dismantle the shield. So I would highly recommend that you use a sponge. If you want to use your fingers, you gotta pat it down. It might take you a little longer. If you start doing this, you could ruin the uh, protection film. Love this. I can't say good enough things about it. Some of you have ordered it, so let me know have you been liking it or not liking it, right? If you completely hate it, let me know why. Not that I could <laughs> give you a refund, but it's always nice to talk about people's experiences with sunscreens and what they found works or not work. And it could also help someone else down below. So you never know. Now the last sunscreen I would like to present is the Banana Boat Banana Boat. Simply Protect Sport in SPF 50 Plus. This is what I use on my body primarily. I'm nearly done with it because I apply this several times throughout the day. I primarily apply it to my chest, neck, upper shoulders because along with my sun hat, I do have my coolie bar black cardigan that I just wear out. I haven't been going out bare armed ever since like last month. I don't want to tan. I just don't want to do it because tanning is skin damage. <laughs> Even if it just looks pretty, it's still skin damage. This is for high endurance and sweat. So if you are in some type of physical activity that you need your sunscreen to stay strong during, I would highly recommend this. The filters in here, we have homosalate, octanoxate, octocrylene, and zinc oxide. So this is uh, inorganic and organic cocktail of sunscreens. I really enjoy this. This doesn't smell aggressively like old school banana boat. I think they reformulated to be very uh, tolerable, may I add. No added oils or fragrances, it says here, and it doesn't have parabens, but you know parabens are fine. They're quite fine. Because they are banana boat, hopefully they use preservatives that have been thoroughly tested like parabens and will ensure the efficacy of the product. So hopefully this doesn't go rogue on me, but I feel like we're fine. They have a sensitive skin version too that I would like to try. I think that relies solely on inorganic filters, maybe just sink and titanium, but I quite enjoy the combination of inorganic and organic. I think it's a, it's a great cocktail just to ensure that you get the best protection from UVA and UVA. UVB. And I find it doesn't leave too much of a white cast. Again, I'm not wearing my arms out and about anyway, but I think it dries down pretty nice. It dries down pretty matte. Uh, it doesn't look shiny on the skin. It doesn't start to break down because I sweat a lot on my chest and I feel it could handle that heat and it will stay on my skin and not start to melt away. So those have been my top five for the season. I'm excited to try other sunscreens, but I've been rotating heavily between these five 
five. And again, my top duo has been my Elta MD and my Beat Shield. I applied the Beat Shield first and then I apply the Elta MD on top, uh, especially if you are sensitive to organic filters like avobenzone and octocrylene and all those. If you find those sting around the eyes, and I will highly recommend the Elta MD that you put around and on your eyes to ensure that skin stays protected as well. If you love Asian sunscreen, these have been my top picks. There is a ton of Asian sunscreen on Yes Style, so you have to kind of look over the ingredients and you just have to see which would potentially be best for you in the long run. I hope this video helped friends. If you had any sunscreen questions or if you just wanted to see my picks or if you just needed some sun care product ideas, then hopefully this helped. And until then, that's a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another tutorial, pick list, or review. Take care and I'll see you again soon. The lighting today miraculously is okay. Can't believe it. Oh, this, so many police cars. <laughs> Again, it's only like 9 a.m. What is happening? Well, it is New York, so that's a stupid question. Recommend that. Oh, no. Now we're getting red again. Oh, no.